Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to my studio once again. So happy to have you here on Halloween. How great is that? One of my favorite holidays, of course. Um, okay, so sorry about the hand. Uh, I went on a hike last week, gashed up my hand really, really gnarly. It's fine, but it's it looks terrible. So since this is my drawing hand, I'm going to be doing a demo, covered it up for you guys so you didn't have to watch that the whole time. Um, okay, so we are going to have a demo of what do we do when we have a drawing that we want to actually get on the canvas? How do we transfer it onto the canvas, right? Uh, it's a question that I get kind of regularly uh, because there are several different ways to do it. I'm going to show you my preferred way to do it. Um, and if you want to know any other ways, we can talk about that as well. Um, be aware, though, that anytime you transfer any thing from one, you know, so, you know, uh, 2D surface to another 2D surface, however it is that you do that, there's going to be minor adjustments that you're going to see uh, will need to be fixed uh, when you do start actually painting. So the less steps that you can get from this image to onto the canvas, the less distortion there will be between them. Um, and so this is why this is my preferred way of going about um, transferring a drawing onto canvas uh, because it has the least amount of steps that I have encountered to do so. Okay, so let's go ahead and get going. Oh, as always, if you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to type them in and I will answer them as I can. Um, and let's, let's get going right now. Okay, so as you can see, I have a drawing here. I did this drawing a few years ago really like it. It would be great as a painting. So what I've done is I photographed it, took it into Photoshop, and put it into black and white. I also upped the contrast a little bit, as you can see. Uh, any size adjustments that I needed to make, I, I did that as well. So you can see that this one is just slightly smaller than the original. Um, but upping the contrast, you can see, especially in some of these kind of softer areas, it really helps um, let you see what is going on there uh, and what you'll really want to transfer in your transfer drawing. This is just printed out on printer paper. It's nothing fancy. You don't need anything fancy for this actual printout. Um, and black and white, you, you really don't want color even because you're only focused mostly on the lines of the drawing instead of the form or the color of the drawing. Um, I just rubbed some charcoal on the back, as you can see. It's just this willow charcoal. Uh, it's really soft charcoal. You don't want anything too hard um, because you want that charcoal to be able to transfer onto your canvas. So I do have some portrait grade canvas here. Um, the smoother canvas transfers better than you know, canvas with more tooth on it, but I mean, you experiment, see what works for you. Some people really like a lot of tooth on their canvas, and so you're you're just going to have to kind of see how it works for you. Uh, but I do prefer to work on portrait grade linen, so that's what I have here. Uh, normally, I would also do any sort of preparation to my canvas that I needed to, such as toning it. Um, I would have that done already, but because I wanted you to be able to see what was going on easier, uh, I left it white today. So uh, the other thing that I want to mention is that we need to be able to keep this drawing down and in the same position as much as possible. So I do have it clipped, as you can see, right up here. Um, and then I lost my tape, so I'm going to go ahead and clip the bottom as well, uh, though I do prefer to tape it. But you do want to be able to access the bottom so that you can flip it up and see, in just a moment, so you can flip it up as needed and see how the transfer is going um, to make sure that you're getting all of the information that you need to uh, as you work. Okay, so We'll go ahead and get going on this transfer. Okay. 
I like to use a red pen when I'm working on a transfer uh, because then I can see exactly where I'm drawing my lines and there's no question as to whether that's a line that I've drawn, you know, with my tool now or whether that was already on the paper. You know, red is just a really easy color to see and so that's where I like to use that. I also like to use my mall stick because that will keep my hand off of the page and that means that I won't get, you know, excess charcoal onto the canvas where my hand had been resting. So I do like to use my mall stick um, and keep it off of the, the page itself. And that's just good practice in general when you're drawing. You want to be able to keep your hand off of the page. So invest in a mall stick. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. This one is kind of a bit more fancy and it um, collapses. It will collapse down a little bit in half. Um, but you can just get a wooden dowel as well. Not a problem. They all work the same. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money to be able to do that. Okay, so let's get going on this transfer. Um, I like to start with my kind of harder lines here. And we're going to try not to cover up too much of the drawing while I work. Don't be in a rush to do this. You want to take your time while you're working because you want the most accurate lines possible to be able to get the nicest transfer possible um, so you can start working on your painting. So you definitely don't want to be in a rush. And because I'm standing behind the camera, I'm gonna be a little bit more messy than I would otherwise um, if I were right up next to the canvas, but I'm gonna try and keep it clean. So in the drawing, you can kind of see where I've defined certain shadows a bit more than, you know, other areas. Um, those are the terminator lines where there is no more light. So the light was coming from about this direction. Um, so there is no more light and it turns into the shadow. That's the terminator line. You'll find a lot of artists will kind of amp that up a little bit more. Um, because it adds so much information in terms of form and light source. Um, and it really helps in a transfer drawing, especially because then you can kind of grasp onto those areas and, um, you know, transfer them accurately. And then, you know, at least those areas are uh, pretty solid in terms of placement and form. But when you get into softer areas, then it gets a little tricky. And I'll show you what I mean. So this nose, as it turns into the light there, it's a softer edge, right? What I like to do in those cases is I just kind of make a few lines so that I know that that's going to be softer as I paint. Same thing through here. So I have this line right here at the side of the nose, but then this shadow is really soft. So I'm just gonna add a few lines so that I can mentally know when I get to that in paint um, that that is a softer transition and I need to be aware of that. While I do paint, I'm always going to have my reference drawing on hand so that I can go back and forth and, um, you know, kind of compare and contrast what, what information I have here uh, versus what information I'm putting down on my painting. I'm just getting some of these larger forms down real quick and then I want to show you what that actually looks like. So 
So you can see that it's starting to transfer. You can see kind of my lines there, my softer uh, transition notes. Um, and you can see exactly where the charcoal is coming off of the transfer. Okay, we'll get everything locked down again. And because I have everything clipped up very securely here, um, I know that it will be in the right place when I put that drawing down again. You'll notice that I'm not filling anything in in terms of value. Um, I'm, I'm just getting the outline, basically, the line work, the form line work of the transfer drawing uh, because I don't want so much charcoal on here. Um, I want to have the least amount of charcoal that I can on my canvas uh, because though charcoal is the preferred, I guess, one of the preferred uh, mediums for a transfer on the canvas, um, it's, it still can muddy that initial wash after you start painting. So I don't want a whole lot of charcoal on here. Um, so I'm only getting the outlines here. I'm sorry, my hand keeps getting in the way. It's one of the things about being left-handed is it's always in the way. So this area, I'm curious if I'm getting the information out of it that, I, that I'm that i hoping to get. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to make sure that I was pressing down firm enough there. Um, and so it looks out like I was, so I can put it back and continue working. I'm going directly over the lines here. I'm not, you know, I'm not going over like overlining or anything. I'm going directly on top of the lines. But even with doing that, it's not 100% guaranteed oops, that uh, I'm not going to have any sort of distortion. Okay, so I did have a little bit of a flub right here. So I wanna check that out real quick, see how that looks. And I'm gonna to wanna to clean that up with an eraser um, so, that, so that that doesn't confuse me when I do start painting. And I know exactly where that line is supposed to be. Now, if I'm going like this, then what I can do is keep my eye on that area and go back and forth and see if they line up with what I've 
erased and what information I still have on there, and they do. This is why it's so important to take your time with this. It seems like it should be a pretty straightforward process, but and, and to an extent it is, but that still doesn't mean that you get to kind of fly through. Some softer areas here. A nice soft area there at that, the turning of that jaw. Now, some people prefer to take some transfer paper, put it on top of the original, draw over it that way, and then take that transfer paper, put it on the canvas, you know, rub some charcoal or whatever it is that they're transferring with on the back, and then do exactly what I'm doing here. The reason I don't do that, and I have done it before, the reason I don't like to do that is because from this tracing over to this one, there's even more distortion than taking a picture of the original and then transferring it from that original drawing. So that's why I, I don't tend to like to uh, do it from tracing paper. Um, but you absolutely can and it is, it can be very, very successful. Just be aware that as you paint, on top of this drawing, you will want to keep your eye out for any sort of inconsistencies or distortions from the original drawing. And you may want to keep them or you may want to uh, correct them either way, um, but they, they inevitably will be there. Okay, it looks like we have some questions. Let me go ahead and get those answered first while, um, while I'm thinking about <laughs> what I'm doing. Okay, Rhiannon asks, will the charcoal contaminate the paint? Excellent question. So the reason why I use charcoal is that um, it will to an extent in terms of, it will kind of feel a bit gross, I guess, in a way. It'll feel muddy, it'll feel a little gritty, um, but as far as paint quality, it will not diminish. And because I'm not putting like a ton of charcoal there, um, it will wash away with that initial paint layer. Um, so I don't have to worry about anything bleeding through the paint like pencil would uh, with oil paint. Pencil is fine with watercolor, right? Uh, you kind of expect to see that pencil there on the paper, but with oil paint, Pencil is not a great thing. And if you look at some old paintings, uh, you may see some pencil lines that have seeped through over the ages. Uh, you may not see them initially, but after some time, uh, they will probably show up. So charcoal will just wash away. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, the other thing that you can use is oil paint. Um, it's more of a process to get that oil paint um, in a consistency on the back of the transfer piece um, to where you can get it transferred onto the canvas. So that's why I don't tend to do this, uh, do it with oil paint, but it is more permanent of a drawing. So it 
if you need that permanency of a drawing on your canvas, that's a great option. Um, but for me, once I get that initial wash with the drawing uh, from the charcoal down, I don't tend to need the drawing anymore. I'm just correcting from my uh, painting instead of from my drawing. Um, so that's why I use charcoal. Um, but yeah, it, it will have a little bit of a muddiness, a little grittiness in that initial wash, which is fine. It, it won't affect anything as far as paint quality. Um, Jess says, reminds me of doing this against the window when I was little. Yeah, that actually is how I used to do it <laughs> when I was studying in school, especially with the transfer paper. Um, I would put it on the window. We had big, big studio windows. Um, I would tape it up on the window, trace over, and then put it on the canvas. So that's, that's exactly it. Um, Caleb asks, uh, so pencil with watercolor uh, and acrylic, but charcoal with oil. Yeah, so acrylic I am less knowledgeable about. I tend to think about it more like watercolor, and so I think that it would be okay. Um, but definitely with charcoal uh, and oil, um, yeah, you, you definitely don't want to be using pencil for sure. Um, because it, it, it definitely will have a negative effect on your paintings later on. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, Adam asks, what charcoal did you use? It is just willow charcoal. Here's a big stick of willow charcoal. It's very, very soft. Um, mm -hmm. It also will wash away really easily. So that's my preferred. It's, you know, it really doesn't need anything fancy. Uh, you can get just regular soft charcoal at the uh, craft or art supply store. Um, it's readily available. So that's that's all this is. Um, vine charcoal is fine, willow charcoal, absolutely fine. Uh, if you get it too soft, like willow can sometimes be a little too soft, uh, your lines will just be a lot lighter, um, but you'll still you should be able to see them, no problem. So how do I use, oh, sorry, Adam also asked, how do I use erasers without smudging or damaging the paper? Can you erase charcoal? Yes, you can erase charcoal. Um, I use kneaded eraser. It's softer. You can uh, form it into any shape. You know, you can get a really nice uh, point on it. I don't know where my kneaded eraser is right now or else I would show you. Um, I need to get a new one anyway. Mine is really beat up and dirty. So uh, yeah, you can absolutely use that. And um, you can dab at the paper if you need to, uh, to kind of lift some of that charcoal up. Now, if you do need something to really get the charcoal out of the fibers of the paper, um, that's harder to do. But these pink pearls will, will do a good good job on it. Um, it may not be 100%, uh, but that's why if you're going really dark with charcoal, you want to be absolutely sure that that's where you want your lines and mass, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so people tend to keep their drawings pretty light, uh, especially in the initial stages until they're absolutely sure that everything is set. And then they'll add more charcoal and get it really dark and deep where it needs to be um, with the understanding that getting it back to white paper is pretty much a non-existent thing. So um, how do I use erasers without smudging or damaging the paper? Um, that, that would be it. Uh, just try not to get too much charcoal on the paper to begin with until you're sure that that's where that charcoal needs to be. Um, so, and get a kneaded eraser. That is a huge, huge help. Uh, the quality of the paper that you use also has a play in it, um, but that's a whole <laughs> different subject. Um, so we can talk about papers and what I prefer to use in, in a future video if you would like, I'm totally down for that. Um, but most charcoal papers uh, that I use are pretty delicate. Uh, if they're not delicate, they're really textured um, and most people will be turned off by them or they're really expensive. 
Um, <clears throat> I don't do a whole lot of charcoal drawings anymore uh, now that I'm out of school. Um, but when I do do a charcoal drawing, um, the paper I use tends to be a bit more delicate. So keep things light, use a kneaded eraser. Okay. So um, Evelyn asks, what is a chirple? Chirple. I don't know. I don't know what a chirple is. I'm so sorry. Is it something that I had said before? Oh, the eraser. Uh, pink. This is a pink pearl or a kneaded eraser. Um, a kneaded eraser is usually gray. Um, oh, okay. I don't understand what transfers are all about. Would you explain why we would need to transfer anything that we we're drawing? Yes, yes, settle in. There we go. Okay, so transfer drawings are drawings that, so like I have here, I have, Katie, if you can switch that real quick. Um, let me just, here we go. Okay, so this is a drawing that I did a few years ago. Um, it's a drawing that I wanna make a painting of now. And so what I need to do is somehow get this drawing onto canvas. So that's what a transfer drawing is, is that I am taking this drawing from the original you know, piece that I did, and I am trying to transfer it exactly from this onto my canvas, though this one is a little smaller than the original. So that's what a tra transfer drawing is. If you have an initial drawing that you have done that you ultimately want to paint onto canvas, then this is a method of getting that drawing onto the paint onto the canvas so that you can start actually painting it. Um, so that's what this whole thing is. If you tend to not draw, do preparatory drawings um, and you just jump into paint, well then you won't need this. But a lot of people do want to do that preparatory drawing uh, to understand the form, the proportion, the gesture, etc. Um, and, and then they don't have to worry about that while they're painting. All of that is taken away. You already have all of those established, ready to go. And then you can just start worrying about um, kind of a bit more form in terms of like really turning within paint and the, the expanded uh, value range that you have in paint and then color. And color is a huge beast to be able to tackle. So if you can take out all of the other issues that you would otherwise be dealing with in paint, uh, you know, color or excuse me, gesture, proportion, placement, etc. If you can take all of those drawing issues out and just focus on color, that is a huge benefit to the overall success of your painting. So that's why um, a lot of people will do preparatory drawings. Um, and being able to see something in black and white and understand how to break it down into its most basic elements is also very, very beneficial because a lot of painting is editing. Um, and so the more you can edit in a transfer drawing, uh, then you can transfer that edited information into your painting and it ultimately will be a stronger painting um, in the end. So I hope that that answered your question, Evelyn. Um, let me know if you have any other questions as well. Okay, so we can keep going on this. Uh, it looks like that's all the questions for now. Um, I appreciate it. Those are awesome questions, by the way. Keep them coming. Okay, so here we go. We're, we're getting close to the end of this. Uh, the other benefit of doing transfer drawings is if you are composing a larger painting, um, some people really like to do a lot of different uh, preparatory drawings and then piece them together on one canvas. Uh, so if I were doing like a lot of portraits on this canvas and I could have this one and then I can transfer another one and I can you know, put them together and compose them that way, um, on the canvas uh, without, you know, having to use Photoshop. I mean, this is the way that it had been done for ages and ages before Photoshop was ever a thing.
Okay. Now, some of my more fine lines that I have here in my drawing, they're going to come up the same value as um, the rest of them. So I need to be aware that this little line here in my drawing is barely perceptible. But I do want to know where the edge of that nose is, so I included it anyway. Um, because when I do come in to paint that, I want to know what the edge of the nose is. Like, there's going to be a transitionary um, color. It's going to be probably a bit more cool um, in terms of, like, the surrounding area. Well, this will probably be a bit more orangey, and then it will probably turn into a more purpley color. So I want to know where that boundary is. But it's going to be so imperceptible uh, overall that... I, I, you know, want to know, but also I want to be able to keep it in check in terms of the value relationships. So that's, again, why I have this drawing on hand so that I can reference back and forth um, to know how much of a transition it is, um, but also how, how strong of a transition um, I need in the painting, if that makes sense. Okay, I want to check real quick. Oh, you know what? I need to get the top of the head. Okay, so yeah, again, you can see just how all of my lines are very, very much the same. There is zero. Um, undulating anything, you know, it, it's all the same black lines throughout. While this one, all of my lines hold a lot of information in terms of form and light source. Um, so again, this line here is so imperceptible, right? Well, this line here is very much obvious, um, but this tells me the light source. This tells me what's going on with that form. This doesn't, this is very, very flat. Um, so that's why, uh, transfer drawing is really great in terms of getting this here, but in terms of actual form information, there's it's it's a lot more difficult to to get that information. So that's why you always want to have your drawing with you as you paint. Um, but it looks like I have all of the information that I would need on there. Um, I want to make sure. But I'm not missing anything. Oh, you know what? I'm missing this side of the nose right there. And I think I also want to put in the edge of that eye. Some of the information, especially up here in the eyes, uh, are going to be a little bit more difficult to understand if I don't have this with me as I start painting. But I can reference back to what exactly is going on. Okay, this is the Terminator cast, cast and core shadow through here. Um, so that's what this is through here. And then it kind of rolls out of the eye socket into this half tone here, right? And then that's going to roll out into the light here. So that's how I will keep the information um, understandable without getting too lost in the lines. Um, and then if I need to, again, clean anything up, I can just come back. And this is where a needed eraser is actually really helpful all of these little charcoal 
parts that are unnecessary, I can just come back and get rid of them really quick. Come back here, make sure that I have what I want and what I need. And if I do want to ever be sure that I um, can come back to this drawing, if I am missing something um, and I'm worried that I, I won't be able to um, get it back later in the right spot, then I will just mark up here so that when I do take this off, if I need to put it back up, I can line those up and it will be right where it needs to be. Not a problem. Okay, so I'll take this off and you can see the full thing. And there we go, now we have our transfer drawing. Now, if I want to start painting, I can. Um, if you want to fix this drawing on the canvas, you absolutely can with some a uh, workable fixative. I don't, uh, again, I, I do prefer to be able to lose my transfer lines within the paint um, so that I'm not beholden to them or, you know, I'm, I'm working more with the paint than with the, the lines and the trickle. Okay, so Jess asked if we do get transferring in places, we shouldn't uh, should we erase it or leave it? I would erase it. Um, that's why it's important to be able to go back and forth between the transfer uh, sheet and what's on the canvas and your source drawing um, to make sure that you have the lines that are absolutely necessary and nothing more. Uh, because it's really easily, uh, really easy to get lost when you start painting um, in those lines that are from the transfer. So you just want the information that you need on there, okay? And then Evelyn asks, can you explain where you use charcoal again? I missed the beginning. Oh, also, yeah, not a problem. Uh, what is that stick you're using? Yeah, not a problem. So I use the charcoal on the back of my transfer uh, printout. This is just a printout of the drawing. I took a picture, um, took it into Photoshop, uh, up to the contrast, kind of brought down the size a little bit, and and then I rubbed charcoal on the back, just this willow charcoal. Um, you can use vine charcoal as well, and that's what's transferring onto the canvas. So that's all that that is. Um, and then the stick is called a mall stick. You can see it's M-A-H-L, I believe. Um, this is a fancy one with leather around the top of it. It twists and I could collapse it for travel, which is really nice. I've taken this thing everywhere. It's really sturdy. Um, but again, you don't have to have a fancy one. I know a lot of artists that just get a cheap dowel stick from the hardware store. Um, sometimes they'll po poke a hole in one of the ends and run some uh, wire through it. And then they can just hang it on their um, board, just on their easel. It's great. Uh, I like to use this because it just feels a little more sturdy. And for me, it just feels a little more professional. I, I, I just like it. But you don't need to spend lots of money for a ball stick. Um, and is the stick tool required? It's not, but it is very, very helpful uh, to keep your hand off of the page. Whenever you're drawing or painting, um, especially left-handers, <laughs> I don't know so much about right-handers, but I know left-handers especially, they tend to smudge on the, on the page. Um, I mean, we grew up writing, right? And left-handers always had that smudge across the page. Um, when you're drawing or painting, that's also a concern. And so you want to keep your hand off of the page itself. Um, and so you'll put this end up on the top of your canvas and just on the upper top of it. And then you can 
keep your hand off while still keeping it very stable. So that's all that this does. Is it necessary? No. Is it super helpful? Yes. <laughs> and you'll notice most artists will have, uh, most professional artists will have a mall stick. Um, it's very, very, very helpful, especially if you're working larger. If you're working small consistently, you may not find it very useful. Um, some people will just cover up what they're working on um, with like some paper or something. And so that way their hand doesn't smudge all over. Uh, they, they just have their hand rested on the paper that's on top of their drawing. Um, I, I don't prefer to do that. I prefer my mall stick. So hope that helps, Evelyn. Rhonda asks, is there any way I can practice more confident strokes when creating a drawing? Mine are very shaky. Yeah, so um, that is something that a lot of people struggle with. They will do a lot of like chicken scratches. Let's go back over here and I'll show you. Um, most people will hold charcoal or a drawing pencil like a, a writing pencil. So they'll hold it up, choke it up on this, and try to write short little strokes. Um, and that, that obviously does not lend itself to be more of a confident drawing. So what you want to do instead is hold your charcoal or your pencil as far back as you can. This also applies to paintbrushes. And then you want to actually step back from the piece. So I have my arm fully extended um, from this piece. I have my fingers obviously rested on the piece itself and that my body is fully extended from that. So that's how far back I wanna be. And then I can make more confident strokes. Now, if I find that I'm you know, having some lines that I don't really like that aren't supposed to be there, well, I can just quickly get rid of them with my eraser or my thumb or whatever it is, um, and then I can keep going from there. But you are 100% going to get a more confident drawing with holding it down at the end and then stepping back from your piece. Is it awkward at first? Yeah, it totally is. Uh, but the more you get used to it, the more you're going to find how much more confident and strong your pieces will become. So give that a try, uh, see how it works for you. Okay, Rhonda. Um, okay, I don't know if this is Rhonda that is still asking, but um, someone is asking, instead of using Photoshop, could you just make a hard copy of your original drawing using a printer? Yeah, so that's, that's what this is. This was just printed out. I just took it into Photoshop so that I could up the contrast um, and just kind of downsize it just a touch. Um, but this is just printer paper from my home printer. It's really nothing fancy. Um, sometimes on my larger pieces, if I need something bigger, uh, I'll take it to like Kinko's and have them use the cheapest paper and the cheapest ink. So, you know, something that's big, like 48 by 64, whatever, will only be a few bucks um, where it might be a bit more to print it out on my uh, computer at home. Um, and also I don't use color ink. I just use black and white because you don't, you don't need the color information for these. Um, okay. Uh, ask, okay, so that was from Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. And then adds um, scanner and printer. Okay, um, yeah, you can absolutely do that. You can scan it in and just print it that way. Not a problem. In fact, I think that's a great solution. So, okay, Adam asks, do you need to wear gloves with charcoal? Uh, is there anything I need to know to store or use it correctly? Okay, no, you do not need to use gloves for charcoal. This is only because I have just the nastiest wound uh, I was sliding down a rock face on a hike last week and I really kind of messed up my hand. So I don't want you guys to have to watch that, this whole, you know, uh, live stream. So that's why I put on the, 
the glove. Some people do like to paint with gloves. Um, there are some paints that can be considered more toxic. Uh, and so a lot of people will use gloves while painting. Um, I have used gloves while painting, especially when I was pregnant. I used gloves a lot. But, um, but yeah, when you're working with charcoal, absolutely not a requirement. <laughs> it's, it's totally fine. Um, and is there anything I need to know to store it or use it correctly? Um, to store it, I'm almost embarrassed to show you how I store my charcoal, but I will. Just a sec. <laughs> This is my drawing box. This has all of my drawing supplies. You can see these are my charcoal boxes. Um, this is my willow charcoal tube that is empty because all of the charcoal has fallen, fallen into the bottom. So you don't need it <laughs> to store it any particular way. Um, it sh probably should look neater than that because they do break pretty easily. So just be better than me. That's all you need to know about storing charcoal. Um, just be better than that mess. Um, but using it correctly, there's really no trick to using charcoal. Um, I mean, there are things that drawing wise, we can talk about in terms of using charcoal, but that's a whole other live stream in terms of uh, drawing with charcoal. Um, and how it differs from pencil and how it it's more similar to paint in a lot of ways than it is to pencil. Um, and so uh, the, tra the natural progression through like when I went to school was you start out in pencil, you move on to charcoal, and then you move on to paint um, because that progression of line thinking with with uh, pencil and then more mass and form thinking with charcoal and then kind of extended mass and form thinking with color in paint is kind of that linear progression. So is there a trick to using charcoal? Not necessarily, but there are tricks to learning how to think about using charcoal in a more mass way instead of a more line way if that makes any sense. And it, it, it may not um, without actually having a deep dive into, you know, drawing with charcoal and, and completing a full drawing. I've, I've worked on charcoal drawings for five weeks. You know, my figure drawings are five week poses every day, three hours a day, just knocking, you know, knocking these uh, drawings out. So there's a lot of charcoal on this paper um, and so, I mean, that's, that's kind of a deep dive into drawing, but, um, yeah, so I hope that helps <laughs> Adam, if that makes any sense at all. And, and let me know if you want me to kind of do a demo with charcoal, um, I can try and figure something out in terms of doing a bit more information about that. Um, but I hope that that is helpful let let me know in the future if you have any questions. Thank you so much for uh, coming and um, happy Halloween. Enjoy the rest of your evening. I hope you get some good candy and have a great day. See you next time.